Hi, everyone. Welcome to a quick intro guide on how to get started with Tara AI, starting with requirements. Requirements are a flexible way of grouping tasks. One of the things we've seen with requirements is that they can be an epic, a technical spec, an initiative, or even a customer commitment. So why don't we get started with creating one? Objectives, use case, and start increasing the size here too. And then what I can do is in one view, I now have my overall spec, um, and then I can also start creating tasks. So let's start there and create a sample task. You can then go in and uh, assign a status. So to do, doing, done, um, add a description to the task, assign someone. So let's say an engineer on your team that owns that task, um, or it might even be the engineer that they are creating the task themselves. Um, and then you also have collaborators. So these are people that are um, also collaborating on the task. And then we have effort. So effort is an important part of the task because um, it's essentially a way of estimating how long the task will take. And, um, and so we recommend that you use dev days um, for your estimation because one of the other things is once you add um, a value to each of your tasks under effort estimation, you can then um, use that for insights and in particular sprint insights. Um, as well as at the um, on the home page uh, for every engineer, they'll be able to see um, how they're tracking uh, in the week sprint. So let's also allocate this to an existing sprint. And then if I had created the task from anywhere else in the application, I could also assign it to a requirement. So let's also add a subtask and there we have it. So let's move on to sprints. So sprints is one of the most powerful features of Tara where um, we've really strived to build something where you can set it and forget it. So um, one of the first things you'll do when you set up a sprint is decide on your duration. So whether it's one week, two week, or four weeks, but once you've saved your duration, every new sprint that you create will automatically be set uh, with a one week duration. Over here in my sprint, I already have a couple of tasks loaded up, but if I wanted to add um, tasks in here, um, I can. So let's say I want to add this task into sprint nine. There we have it, a new task has been added. And um, here I can actually view all of the requirements um, as well as the number of tasks remaining in each requirement. So this is a very simple task counter and enables you to understand which tasks within what requirement have not yet been added into the sprint. Let's say your sprint is now ongoing and you'd like to view insights. So just clicked on view details. Let's say I'm doing a daily stand up, or um, it's really the beginning of the week what were some of the efforts that were predicted for each task and then how long each task actually took and with this view um, this essentially helps with retros and really between the predicted versus actual scenarios so um, as you go through some of the tasks the other thing you can also do within that sprint details view is take a look at all of the commits that are taking place in github um, and then also open pull requests. So these are PRs that are either becoming stale um, and they essentially require review and they need to be closed. So you can also sort by oldest and newest. Now let's head into home. As of today, uh, for me as an engineer, one of the things I can do is view current sprint stats um, and see, okay, this is the percentage that I've completed and this is the overall effort uh, for me for within the sprint. And then I can also see how the team is tracking in terms of their total effort, um, as well as what percentage they've completed. Uh, I can also move tasks very quickly. Um, so let's say these are now in doing state. And then I've also completed some of these tasks. And so as soon as I start hitting done, stats start to go up and um, immediately I can start to view that um, great for this specific sprint um, I'm already two-thirds of the way through all right now let's go back into sprints this is the sprint uh, load indicator and the way it's calculated is that it really looks at your past sprints and the effort and the tasks that were completed by your team so the idea is that it's really based on your current teams uh, and their current and most recent velocity. And then based on your completed sprints, 
it then starts to calculate um, whether or not you've overloaded your sprint. So it looks like I have, it looks like I've overloaded sprint nine um, and my recommended effort was about 58. So that means I should um, start to perhaps remove some of the tasks and move them into the next sprint um, or um, decide to move them back into uh, the planning phase versus having them being executed on in the sprint. Another automation functionality in Tara is the ability to complete sprints and then move um, a lot of the to-do and doing tasks immediately into the next sprint. So sprint 10 is my next sprint, so I'm going to hit complete. Sprint nine is now in completed phase and sprint 10 is now ongoing. And all of the to-do and doing tasks from sprint nine have now moved into sprint 10. If you're also looking at inviting new users, just hit the invite users button.